I don't know who suggested that a life on the ocean wave was easy, but that's not the full picture. It's tough. Got to get cargo ops finished. Maintenance schedules to stick to. Pressure everywhere. And that is when accidents can happen. You know the most common types of accidents on board? People slipping, tripping and falling. And we're going to be talking a lot about that in this issue of Alert. But it's not surprising that slips, trips and falls are the leading cause of accidents on board. Let's just think about the environment for a moment. There's bad weather for a start, and we all know what that means. A lot of pitching and a lot of rolling. Then we've got wet and slippery deck surfaces. Oil and grease. Poor lighting in compartments and tank spaces. High masts, funnels, bulkheads, gangways, unmarked edges. A moving object such as mooring decks, cranes, derricks, davits and hatch covers. They're all hazards that can cause slip ships and falls. Many of which are serious. Some even fatal. It's easy enough to blame these accidents on human error, such as not following proper procedures or poor housekeeping. Or not following the simple rule, one hand for the ship and one for yourself. But had a little more thought been given to designing out these hazards at the design stage, some of these accidents may not have occurred. Of course, there can be flaws in the best of design solutions, some of which cannot be detected until the build stage or even after the ship has entered service. But potential hazards should be identified during design and build. This is where the operational experience of the seafarers and the expert knowledge of a human factor specialist can be used to spot the hazards that can be responsible for the accidents involving slips, trips and falls. Research has found that seafarers and managers consider lifting or carrying and slips, trips and falls as the most likely causes of injury. Which of course raises the question, if everyone is aware of the risks, then why do accidents still occur? Now it can be argued that there will always be those who will hit themselves with a hammer, for example, or even slip on a wet deck. But surely it benefits everybody if the workplace is made safer through improved design, through the implementation of appropriate procedures and through improved awareness and understanding. There's a great deal of advice and guidance available from various sources, yet slips, trips and falls still occur. In most cases, it shows how to assess and control the risks, create safe systems of work, monitor and review performance. But is this really effective? Good enough to produce a decrease in the number of accidents resulting from slips, trips and falls? Designing out slips, trips and falls is not new, difficult or expensive but operational design needs to be a priority in the minds of those responsible for the design and operation of ships. The IMO has said that prevention of incidents from locations such as vertical ladders, ramps, walkways and work platforms is one of five key areas for ergonomics on board ship. From the very start of design and construction, consideration should be given to past events and occurrences. Input from shore managers can provide statistical data and practical experiences from the end user can be recorded and considered. But there can never be a design solution for every single hazard. So seafarers working on board ship must comply with safety regulations and codes of safe working practices, follow the correct procedures and use the appropriate PPE. And even when they have done that, they still need to remember that the simple rule, one hand for the ship and one for yourself, will still apply. So, every reason to take care. That's all for this issue. If you want other opinions from maritime professionals, you can download the bulletin from the website. Glad you found the time to visit us. Hope to see you again soon.